Good evening, my lovely friends, and welcome to live stream meditation, where we work with the star matrix, what we call the Christ matrix, because it is a prism of light that is a faceted prism of consciousness and light that from the origin, the very beginning of creation, source asked itself, what am I? And then created that eye that was looking back, which was a light eye, but it was a prismatic form that could image in what already existed within the mind of source. And then through the prismatic formulation of it, literally spin it out into holographic reality and begin to create and the pictures and the images of creation. <clears throat> now, why that is important is because within a uh, source, within the void, the mind of God, if you will, everything already exists. So if you can imagine before creation even began, there was simply the void, utter darkness for eons and eons and eons of time. And Source was simply dreaming. And as it dreamed and dreamed and dreamed, it dreamed every possible scenario that could ever be dreamt. But then that's when Source finally asked itself, well, what am I? And then that was the light mind of the Christ, the light that was then able to illuminate and what existed was perfection. The, the, if you will, the joy of it was then learning how then to reflect that within form so that spirit could actually measure itself from mind, imagination, to actual embodiment, to give form and color and movement to that which was imagined by source. So there is even a part of you, which is your spirit that emerged from out of the void, that is already perfect. Now, the reason this is important, I did a session for a woman uh, the other night, and in it, I talked about how the divine being that she is, the perfection, if you can imagine, it's like a very perfect and beautiful jewel. And that jewel literally takes a facet of itself. Mother and father prepare a form. And then the divine spirit that you are places that down in time space. And it's a perfect facet. Shines with the clarity and all the essence of that which is the fullness of the spirit that is seeking to be finally fully reflected. It's just like a hologram. If you take a hologram and you shatter the hologram. We know that with even the tiniest, tiniest piece, the whole hologram exists, the image. And so it's the same then when you as source and purity reflected yourself in form. The essence that is then born in the time space is also perfect. But the reflection is then covered over with programs, with uh, human conditions, which is not an error because it's part of evolution to learn about how to develop and fully refine a form that could finally reflect the fullness, the absolute clarity and purity of the spirit within form. And so it takes time, it takes evolution. And so this has been the whole evolutionary journey of life from the very beginning of the cosmos. Purity already exists. And so you're not looking for purity. You're not looking for a wholeness and fullness. You're looking to simply feel it and reflect it within form. Now, because there was simply a piece and it was learning and understanding how to over time develop itself and reflect this is the whole evolutionary journey that we have gone through of evolving to the environment. And so one-celled amoeba, one-celled animals, 
they then began to adapt to what was occurring within the environment. The environment would change, the hot, the cold, the nights, the days, the cycles of the moon, the whole uh, movement of life on the planet. And every time a uh, one-celled animal adapted within its DNA and created an opportunity to evolve into a new niche, then there was another level of consciousness, another level of evolution that was established. And so you see, we are a product of that physical evolution. That's the physical form that we uh, carry around. But the goal is then to be able more and more each time that we evolve to reflect more of the purity of spirit within form. And so through evolution, um, particularly over the last 2,000 years, it's been a almost like an upgrade or an upstep in evolution. It's happening faster, happening quicker. Uh, the reason being because humanity has become so much more conscious. And as we have become conscious, we have been creating many new different types of environments, settlements, ways to farm, to have grains, to husband cattle, and so we kept changing environment and adapting to it. But then over the last probably you know, 500 years with the industrial evolution, all of a sudden this great evolutionary jump in environmental shifts and environmental changes. And humanity has then had to adapt to that much more rapidly and quickly. And, and what this did, you see, it began to really develop the mind and the brain of thinking, how to adapt to these new environments, uh, the new shift in technology, uh, computers, automobiles, on and on and on. And so it's been a very rapid evolution adapting. And so the DNA has been creating those new sequences within the body. But you see, we've reached a point in evolution now where the old paradigm is over. And it's no longer about adapting to the environment because the environment is closing fairly quickly, might say. We see uh, heat, we see uh, earthquakes, we see hurricanes, um, could be more as far as earthquakes coming, just a whole host of new adaptive things happening. And if we're trying to adapt to that, it's gonna be difficult, which is why as we're moving into the new paradigm with spiritual evolution, we learn how to adapt through imagination. And so if we're able to hold the mind, which again, over the last paradigm became highly developed, but it became simply more of a thinking machine, a thinking instrument, a doing instrument, we call it the masculine aspect, but at the same time in all that doing and active, it was trying to do something in the environment to create wholeness or prosperity or relationship, always seeking to change something out there to find happiness or peace or some level of fulfillment within. But the new environment that we're moving to says now we must learn how to silence the thinking mind which is why it's really only really through about meditation, uh, yoga, and some of the other spiritual practices, we can begin to teach the mind to become really a silent instrument. And it's a silent instrument that is just simply light and focus. We've talked about how when you go to the movie, they turn the projector on. It's simply light focused with real clarity and purity. No distractions, no wavering. They put in front of the film, which in our scenario is the imagination, and then on the screen, it automatically begins to play. So the new paradigm you see we're moving into is demanding that the mind become more silent, more focused, and simply a bearer of light and attention, true masculine nature. Focus, light, and attention. And as we then learn to love, and to feel the feelings of joy and peace and happiness, those childlike qualities, joy, creativity, imagination, adventure, innately bubbling up from within us. And then we begin to imagine 
with the joy, with the creativity, with the happiness, with the love that I feel, what would be my creation? What would be my imagination? And if we are able to hold the imagination with clarity, feel it dynamically, focus the quiet and silent mind on that light upon it, it then holographically begins to emanate out from us and begins to pre-create the environment around us to be that. And so we are then evolving from inside out now. Equally important, you see, as we're then feeling the light emanating from within. For the last 2,000 years, really back to the very beginning of creation, man, womankind has been looking to things outside of themselves for spiritual illumination. Religion, uh, spiritual uh, mastery, uh, you know, yogic teachers, all marvelous, all part of the evolution. But it was always, you see, looking for something out there to evolve us, to bring us into another level of understanding. But now we're at the time where we now evolve from inside out. If we're doing the work of focusing the mind and imagining the light emanating from within, the light already is perfect. It's the source, divine, creation, spirit you already are. So you're not looking for something. You're not trying to do something. We're no longer looking to make things out there to feel different here. If we're focusing the mind and feeling and creating it as an evolutionary feeling of imagination within, it then vibrates out from us. The body adapts radically and quickly. We no longer are susceptible to viruses, to the things that are now coming forth on the planet that are saying, if you don't adapt and change rapidly, then you'll probably be exiting the planet. And we're going to be looking for a lot more of those things happening, not because it's a doomsday scenario, it's simply adaptation. If we're not moving into the new paradigm with literally becoming creator beings from within, we're not going to be able to play in, you might say, the sandbox of the new creation. It's nothing that is so much horrendously happening. It's just evolution. When you reach one stage of evolution, there then is the beginning of another one. But this is a most beautiful stage of evolution where we become co-creative beings because we're able to reach deep within, into the void, back into source mind, which we are, which we literally evolve from out of. We can then see and imagine the perfection of creation that already exists. Perfection already exists. We're simply seeking to reflect it within form, to make it dimensional so that you can taste it, touch it, smell it, feel it, and have the joy of the beauty of magically feeling it here. That's a rose. There's such beauty, such magic within it. It's a dolphin. It's the magnificent spruce tree. It's a butterfly. Things in perfection within the mind of source that have now literally evolved to become divine expressions of source, love and beauty and grace. And so we are now at that stage of evolution where we can begin to evolve the body into a new whole, almost like Christed form. This is the energy of the star tetrahedron. The masculine of mind, focused, silent, attentive. The imagination, feeling, love of the feminine, fully alive and within us. Loving every part of ourselves, every tissue, every little down to the blood, the bones, the cells. So powerfully loving self that we're no longer looking for something. We're no longer trying to perform to be good enough. We're no longer seeking to make something out there to feel good enough here. Our identity is established within. I am God and I make that which I choose to make because creator being I am. And so this again is the new stage of evolution. Now, it doesn't look so much like that right now because there are, relatively speaking, you know, so few people that are really at this stage of evolution. When I was talking to this uh, person that I was doing the session for the other day, I was saying 
the only individuals that I usually might interface with are very highly evolved beings. The average bear, I don't really have uh, energy for them. I love them with great compassion. I send them light. As I walk through the marketplace, I'm always sending love and joy and peace to all creation. But it's only a certain level of soul development that I've been called to work with. And so this is why I said to this particular person, you're a highly evolved soul. I can see the perfection of the spirit you are and how it then looked it was placed into form. I described very clearly what this part of her was and how it was then seeking to arise forth into expression, this incarnation. And what were the parts of herself that were yet thwarting that because there was programs from childhood. Because this is when we're programmed from conception to seven to disbelieve fully in the jewel-like part of us that is put into form. And so as we then identify those emotions, and that's what it is, and then slip through them and learn to love the self, as we're loving self, then imagination, creativity, the childlike joy begins to bubble up once again. The mind is now becoming a silent instrument of focus. We focus upon imagination, create a new body from inside out with golden liquid light, and we evolve to become human divine beings. So very exciting time on the planet, but also a very important time because we can see that the environment, the world out there is rapidly changing. We really don't know from one day to the next what's going to happen. I never worry about it. I never think about it. It never bothers me because I know from inside out that I create my reality. I create my environment from within. And as I'm simply focused deeply within my meditation experience and creating more golden liquid light flowing from inside out, my cells are changing, my consciousness is adapting because that is now flowing from me. Things out there are peaceful and harmonious and filled with grace. Yes, like you, I observe a lot of travesty happening, but I observe it. No emotion is attached to it. There's compassion. Loving every part and every parcel of what's going on. Both that which is causing the tra tra traversity is that which is causing the pain, but also those that are involved in uh, receiving it. It's all source. It's all God. It's just a little bit mixed up in its consciousness. And so as we have compassion, you see, we become the observer. So great changes taking place on the planet, but it's a time of evolution from within, my friends. So really a time to once again really rev up our energy, our focus, and our desire to be of service in the new age coming. One of the things that uh, helps us uh, in the focus is our breath work. Uh, the reason being because as we're breathing in, we know that we're literally breathing in golden liquid light source from inside out. As I said earlier, source isn't out there. We're not looking for God out there. We're not looking for truth out there. It already exists in perfection within. As we simply imagine and feel in our breath that I'm breathing liquid golden light from inside out, it becomes a stream of living river of peace and joy from us. It adapts and changes the environment of the body. We evolve. It flows out in the world and then creates harmonious expression that we meet in our daily life. So breath work that we do is called the Soham breath. And the in-breath, we're literally breathing in oxygen. But more importantly, it's the... From the open doorway into the void within the heart, we're literally summoning and calling golden liquid river of light from within. We hold the breath for a minute, and as we exhale, we're seeing and feeling sparkling, effervescent golden light flowing from us. This is what the physical sun is doing. It's not gathering something out there to give to humanity, to give to earth. It's simply from inside out arising forth from this open door within the sun, it then flows out like a living stream to humanity and then purposes all life within our solar system. So this is what we become, living stars of creation. So let's do about five minutes of the very deep Soham breath. 
We like to have the spine nice and erect because it is what we call the rod of initiation, meaning the first shock with the base of the spine is grounded with Mother Earth. The crown shock with the top of the head is open to spirit, father, sky, and we become then the golden rod of initiation that connects heaven and earth. So let's go ahead and do the Soham breath for about five minutes of deep breathing. Once again, we're using the mind Simply focus attention and light to the heart, observing breath, golden liquid light being drawn in from the open doorway. Mind is observing sparkling, effervescent, radiant light all around. Adapting and changing the cells of the body, flowing out into the world, and the mind comes back to the breath. Very slow, deep belly breathing. Watch the mind and see if it wonders. Gently bring it back to the breath. You cannot be thinking when the mind is observing the breath. sparkling, effervescent, a river of golden sunlight from within. Streaming out into the world, God I am. Focus the mind on the breath. A living river of golden sunlight and peace, I am. As you imagine the living river of golden light, you become the emanation of golden light.
And another breath or two, deep summoning of sunlight and peace from within. And back to the now. I think you'll see as you simply did that short five minutes of breath, how calm and quiet all the systems of the body become, how life around you settles down. When we're driving in the office, in the workplace, in the marketplace, if we're simply observing the breath and feeling gold and liquid light flowing from inside out. We are already pre-creating our environment. We're adapting from inside out, creating new cellular memory, which then creates a new experience within the world that we meet. We are learning how to create our story in the world by imagining the story I am from within. Imagining the story I am from within because that story of perfection, it already is the soul that you are, the divine being. You already are that. As you can imagine it, imagine it and feel it and focus upon it, you then become it. And as you become it, you then gift the world with that same divine quality. So this is peace on earth. Of course, it is structured within the star tetrahedron, which is the masculine of divine power, upper triangulation, and the feminine of divine love in this crystalline prism of light that we call the Christ matrix. It is, again, a light mind, the light mind of the Christ energy that is able to appear back into the void from the open place within the heart and as it then illuminates the perfection of source within, God I am, source I am, illuminates it. We imagine it and feel it, hold light upon it, then holographically spins it out into creation. And so we become creator beings, Christed beings. So we're going to go ahead and do uh, the meditation where I'll take you through the whole sequencing of focusing the mind by bringing light to the brow chakra. Within the center point of the head, we ignite the divine light of the soul, spirit, pure, pure light. Holding attention here, we focus it down to the heart. We imagine the star tetrahedron, masculine above, feminine beneath. And as it then spins, it opens the doorway within the heart. And we simply imagine and feel gold and liquid light arising for it. It is the breath, you see, that is summoning it out. So let's go ahead and close the eyes and feel the body relaxing. I am the breath of life. I bring the attention between the eyebrows, drawing a line straight back to the center point within the head. I ignite with imagination the light of the divine I am. Image in. The light I am. We focus the light to the heart, shock with the sternum.
Imagining all around us, within and through, is the star tetrahedron. The Christ matrix already exists. And in its movement, there is an open doorway within the heart chakra at the sternum. And arising forth from within is the living spring. Golden sunlight and peace, I am springing forth into this dimension to bring peace on earth. Let's sit quietly and I will join with you in the light activation of spirit within.
and welcome back to Earth, Earthlings. So it's very important, of course, to practice our meditation at this time on the planet, learning to really focus the light of the mind. Breath is a great way to do that when you're driving, out in the marketplace, at work. If you're focused upon the breath, the body is calm, things are peaceful, the mind can't be thinking. If things get stirred up, a lot of emotions simply come back. And if you watch the breath for a little while and really deep breathe, calling source from within, you'll see that things calm down. There's another level of knowing that you're the creator of your reality. So we'll see you again uh, in two weeks' time for meditation. Thank you for being late one night. I really appreciate it. Had an important uh, program last night. And we'll look forward to seeing you quite soon. If you have any questions, please feel free to call. Get in touch with me. And uh, thank you very much, my friends. Blessings. <laughs>